Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Advanced Topics. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about pointer aliasing in CUDA applications. So the last time that we talked about aliasing, we showed some source and assembly using Compiler Explorer, and how the compiler wasn't always able to generate the same optimizations if it couldn't figure out if two pointers pointed to the same piece of memory. So we're going to be taking a practical uh, look at this through matrix multiplication using CUDA. So aliasing isn't just a problem for CPU applications, it's a problem for things like GPU applications as well. So to get started, let's open up a baseline matrix multiplication implementation in CUDA. And uh, we're not going to go over the entire host code here. You can check out my CUDA crash course series if you're more interested in this. But I will explain this function that suffers from aliasing problems. So here, this global just means that it's a function that gets called from the CPU and runs on the GPU. And over here, what we're doing is we're calculating a row and a column for each thread that we launch. So the way that this matrix multiplication implementation is structured is that every single thread we launch computes one output element in the C matrix. So it'll go across one row column pair. So across one row of the A matrix, down one column of the B matrix, doing that pairwise product. So here we're passing in you know, three matrices, our A, B, and C, and then the dimension. So we're assuming a square matrix here. So over here, um, in the actual computation part, you see that we're initializing uh, C to zero. Um, that way, you know, when we're accumulating, we're not accumulating into some uninitialized variable or uninitialized piece of memory. So we're setting it to zero, and then inside of this for loop where we go across one entire row of the A matrix and down one column of the B matrix that are the same length, both length in, um, here, you know, here's our traversal of the A matrix, and here's our traversal of the B matrix, and accumulating into C. So let's go ahead and compile this and then just collect some you know, initial performance numbers. So we'll go ahead and compile, uh, not with G uh, GCC, but with NVCC, matrix mall, naive. And then I'll go ahead and call the output naive, and I'll turn on O3 optimizations. So if we go ahead and uh, profile this, so let's use nvprof, and we'll run naive, get some, you know, basic uh, performance numbers here. So, um, you know, you always have to take these with a grain of salt, especially when you're only looking at a single measurement and your GPU is not exclusively running this application. So it might be running other things like uh, graphics as well. Um, so we're going to be mainly looking at trends here. So the, the actual impact of aliasing here may be different from machine to machine. So here we see that um, it took about 36.642 milliseconds. And this was for a 1024 by 1024 matrix. Okay. So now let's look at a couple other implementations that don't suffer from aliasing, and let's kind of explain why they don't. So the first one we'll look at is this uh, matrix mall uh, temp implementation here. So you see that most of the code looks exactly the same, and it uses the exact same CPU side code as well. So here you see it's another um, CUDA kernel called matrix mall. Same input uh, parameters here, same calculation of uh, row and column. The only difference is that now instead of directly writing into C, we end up uh, you know, creating this temporary variable called temp, and then we accumulate it to temp before writing that back into C at the very end of execution. So let's go ahead and compile this one. So I'll do um, nvcc on matrix mall temp, and then I'll call the output, say temp, and then turn on O3 optimizations again. So again, the last time we ran this uh, with the naive one, we got about 36 milliseconds. So let's use nvprof again, except this time on temp, and let's see what we get. So it looks like it's a lot faster, so about 22 milliseconds, so that's actually significantly faster. Run it again, you see, oh, maybe even faster. So again, there's some variation whenever you run these things. So um, here, we'll go ahead and take this about you know 19.131 milliseconds here. So we're getting to a point where we're almost two times faster in this temp example than we are in the uh, the baseline where we're just writing directly into C. Um, so you know why exactly is this going on, right? And this is all because of aliasing. So the compiler has to be a, a bit more conservative in our naive implementation because it doesn't know if A, B, and C alias each other. Now we help the compiler out there by generating by adding that temporary variable or that local variable because every single thread will have that private local temp there, and that can't possibly alias any of the other pointers. So writes into that you know temp variable that's local isn't going to affect say uh, B or or yeah A or B rather. Um, and so because of that, the compiler can be you know a lot more. Um, it, the compiler can be a lot more clever in how it optimizes things, and we end up getting a 2x or almost 2x performance bump here. 
But we don't necessarily need to add that, uh, that temporary variable, right? If the problem is aliasing, we can add that restrict keyword that we looked at last time. So let's go ahead and look at matrix mall restrict, and that's exactly what we do. So we keep the exact same code as the first example. The only difference is now we're putting this restrict keyword here, or this restrict intrinsic, for each of our pointers. And then you can see that inside of the actual uh, CUDA kernel itself, we're doing the same thing as the first one. We're just setting C equal to zero here. Um, and then we're accumulating directly into the C array and then accessing you know, one row of the A matrix, one column of the B matrix for every single thread. So let's go ahead and quit out of here. And again, let's go ahead and uh, compile this, or with NVCC rather, we'll compile matrix mul restrict.cu. Um, we'll call the output, say, restrict, and turn on O3 optimizations. And then let's do nvprof on restrict now. Let's see what we get from a timing. Um, so about 22.03 milliseconds. We can run it a couple times, see you know if that's... So it looks like it got a little bit better, 20.7, 19.68. So pretty much exactly the same as the other case, right, where we had that temporary variable. So we can see that, you know, what was really going on here was an, an aliasing problem. And the compiler, once we told it, don't worry about the aliasing, these things won't alias each other. Um, it was able to generate much more optimized code and it led to a 2x performance bump in this case. So one additional side note that I'd like to point out was I tried this on the CPU side as well. Um, but the CPU side, when I just had a matrix mole kernel, and then I checked the timing of it right in a benchmark, I, it didn't suffer from this problem, right? It didn't suffer from this problem until I split it into multiple translation units where I had the um, where I had the actual matrix multiplication function in a separate translation unit than the actual benchmark code. And the reason why is because the entire program, when it was just a single source file, the compiler had the full context of that program to work with, and it was able to figure out, I believe that, um, that there was no aliasing problem there because you know the things I was passing into my function um, weren't aliasing each other. However, in this case, right, with this GPU code, it's a little bit uh, different even though everything's in a single source file. The reason why is because the actual GPU code gets compiled separately from your CPU code, right? So all the CPU setup code will get compiled by your host compiler like GCC, um, but your GPU code will get compiled by NVCC and then compiled down using um, PTXIS, right? So it's different compile flow, so I believe that um, it's not able to handle this, you know, this aliasing problem even when the uh, kernel and the host code are in the exact same file. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. As always, all this code can be found at github.com slash coffee before arch. I'll link this NVIDIA developer blog on pointer aliasing as well below the video. And if you're interested with any of these, this code, you can find it in this CUDA programming section of uh, my GitHub page. But that's going to do it for this video. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.